Welcome biologists, we're looking at communicable diseases taken from 4.1.1 from the OCR specification A for A-level biology. Looking at specification point M, the possible sources of medicines to include some examples of microorganisms and plants. So microorganisms and plants, these are the main sources of new medicines. Um, and this is also linking into biodiversity, which is one of the last topics. Um, so we need to maintain biodiversity in order to enable us to still have these microorganisms and plants to explore to find new medicines. This is why certain areas of the world are protected and people are against, especially biologists, people um, are against um, things like knocking down and destroying the rainforest because we're potentially getting rid of plants that are possible sources of medicines. Okay, so we're having a look uh, at these guys now. We're not going to touch too much on synthetic biology and personalised medicines because you do a lot more of that at A2. So we're going to look at that at A2, not now. Okay, so this is taken from uh, the A-level biology for OCR textbook. And this is just to give you an idea of different types of um, antibiotics that are out there and what their functions are and different painkillers that are out there. So we've obviously we've got heard of penicillin before. This is taken from a mould and it's an antibiotic. We've got that doctacillin from yew trees, and this is using cancer treatment. We have things like aspirin, which is taken from willow, um, which is used as a painkiller and anticoagulant and an anti-inflammatory. Um, we have peralt, uh, which is taken from the venom of a cone snail. Um, again, this is a, a new painkiller, more effective than morphine. We've got vancomycin. This is taken from a, a soil fungus, and this is antibiotic. And dig, dig, digoxin, which is extracted from frog fox gloves, and this is used uh, to help treat um, various heart conditions. As you can see, the majority of these are taken from plants and microorganisms. Um, so why is it important to maintain biodiversity? If you want to pause and have a go at these questions before the answers come up. We need to make sure that we're trying to increase the gene pool um, because populations can be more likely to withstand the changes. It's a source of potential medicines as well. Um, so how can pharma, pharmacogenetics be used to treat ill people? And this is where we use... Um, we used to predict an organism's response to medicinal drugs by studying their genome. And like I said, we're going to do more about that at A2. So we're not going to do too much of that at the moment. So the main thing with this lesson objective is to make sure that you can apply whatever they give you as a medicine to what you already know about it. So, for example, they could tell you about a medicine that you've never heard of before, a new antibiotic, and you'll have to apply your knowledge of bacteria to this new antibiotic that, say, for example, breaks down the peptidoglycan wall. You cannot learn all the possible sources of medicines that are out there. You just need to be able to apply what they give you in the exam to what you already know about what you've already been taught about on your specification. But what you do need to take away from this is that we need to maintain biodiversity because plants and microorganisms are a source of a potential medicines and we need to try and keep hold of them. So good luck with your exams, guys. Please make sure you do not use the words size, it, they, or amount, and please use good biological terminology. Good luck.